Now that we have some of the basic concepts out there, in particular the ideas of voltage, current, and resistance, and we have some understanding about how voltage is like a pump for pushing electrons around a circuit, current is the flow, and things like that, let's just start getting into some more electronics now by building our first simple circuit. So what you'll need out of your parts bin in order to get this one to work is a 9 volt battery with the clip installed, the two wires all ready to go. You need a breadboard, as if you, call, if you recall a breadboard is the holder of electrical components. You need a single resistor. We're going to use a 100 ohm resistor, so we're looking for a resistor with the bands of brown, black, brown on it. We need a single LED. And we need a switch, like the kind you find at a hardware store, and if you would, get the switch and attach two pieces of wire onto the screw terminals here and make sure you strip off both ends of the wire too so you have some bare conductor exposed right here. So I took a piece of wire here and here's what it looks like with the two sort of bare ends ex exposed like that and put it on the switch. Let's just get on then and build our circuit and what we'll do is we'll build a circuit that'll turn on the LED when the switch is on. So what we'll do then just to get started here is we'll get the breadboard set up here and I'll push the, uh, the red terminal or the positive terminal battery just in any old place like that and so what I'm going to sort of visualize happening here is as this circuit works here is that we'll just sort of stick to the convention that current flows out of the positive terminal of a battery and it's okay to do that and so of course red is known to be the positive terminal so I'm going to assume as this circuit's going to work, the circuit's going to work that charge is going to flow out of this red wire here and be delivered basically to this point of the breadboard and I know that wherever this red conductor is connected here this entire column is connected to it as well. So what I'm going to do first of all is the current that comes out of the battery, I'm just going to route it right into a resistor right here. Now no current actually flows until the circuit is complete, but it's still I'm just using that as a model to get these components going here. So I imagine the current coming out of the battery, flowing along this red wire, going into the resistor to immediately get slowed down. And the reason why I want to slow it down is because these LEDs here, it turns out they're very sensitive to too much current. If you put too much current into them, they'll immediately blow out. So if I connected this LED to a battery directly, it would blow out. So I always need a so-called protection or series resistor in line with the current that would feed an LED in order to protect it. So that's what this resistor is going to do in this circuit here. Furthermore, as we move on with the LED now, and LEDs are kind of particular devices of modern technology and it matters how they're put into a circuit. So what you're going to look for on the LED casing is a flat end of the plastic case. And I can clearly see it here. You may not be able to see it too well on the camera, but get your LED and hold it close and you see a flat edge to the case. That always has to point towards the more negative side of the battery here. So I would not have the flat side facing towards the red or the positive terminal of the battery because the LED won't work. And I'll illustrate that. So I'm putting the LED here. I'm going to connect one lead onto the sort of output of the resistor there. And the other lead will go into still another column. So I'm sort of gradually working my way rightwards with this circuit. In other words, over to this way. Current's going to come out of the battery. Be slow through the resistor protect the, to protect the LED. And then go into the LED and the flat edge of the LED is over here. Then what we'll do is we'll say, okay, let's just take that current that could be flowing out of the LED. Let's make it go through the switch now. So I stick one of the wires of the switch to the output terminal of the LED. And assuming the current flows through the switch here, I'll run it back around just to any old point on the breadboard is fine, something like this. So the current that would come out of the LED would conceivably go through the switch. And we had a little example of how switches work in a previous video here. And the current will come out of the switch, flow back around and into this column of the breadboard. So I've sort of, I've crossed the gap and I'm down here, but I'm just sort of choosing a separate column on the breadboard that's not used by anything else at this point. And I'll go ahead and connect the negative terminal of the battery to the device. And we see that the LED is already coming on. So a couple things we want to point out here is one, the switch works as we think on, off, on, off. So we have a very basic electric circuit going. And what we'd like to point out here is one of the reasons why it's called a circuit, because circuits always have to be complete well, they have to look like circles. So do I have a circle here? Do I see flow charts coming out of the positive terminal of the battery? Yes. Going through the resistor, going into the LED, coming out of the LED, into the switch, back out of the switch here, and back so it can go back into the terminal of the battery right here. So it looks like indeed I do have sort of a circle or a circuit like that. So there's my basic circuit right there. And I'll just do a couple things with it. For instance, let me just show you something about the LED. If I turn the switch back on again, and suppose while it's on even, I pull the LED out and just reverse it, rise the stand. So I make the flat edge point more towards the positive terminal of the battery. See, the LED doesn't come on at all. No matter what, what I do with the switch, the LED won't come on because it's just not put in right. The polarity is wrong. You always have to have the flat edge pointed towards the more negative terminal of the battery 
like this. So now the flat edge is back and returned over to this side of the LED and of course it comes on now. So there you go. There's your first circuit. And what we'll do in the next video is we'll look at this circuit in terms of electrical schematics to see how we could draw something like this for communicating our electronics ideas to others.